Welcome to the 30th day of 230 days reading. Today we are reading from Numbers. And today is not today is not Sunday for me. Today is Friday when I'm recording this in advance. We are reading from Numbers chapter 34 to Deuteronomy chapter 2. As we've been reading five chapters by day. And today we'll be reading three chapters from Numbers, the rest of Numbers, and then two chapters from Deuteronomy. Let's go. So that's four. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land of Canaan, that is the land that shall fall to you as an inheritance, the land of Canaan to its boundaries, your southern border uh, shall be from the wilderness of Zing along the border of Edom. Then your southern border shall extend toward shall extend then eastward to the end of the salt sea, your border shall turn from the southern side of the ascent of Akrabi, continue to Zin, and be on the south of Kadesh Banner. Then it shall go on, then shall go on to Azarada and continue to Asmon. The border shall return from Asmon to the brook of Egypt and shall end at the sea. As for the western border, you shall have the great sea for a border. This shall be your western border. And this shall be your northern border. From the great sea, you shall mark out your border line to Mount Or. From Mount Or, you shall mark out your border. You shall mark out your border to the entrance of Amas. Then the direction of the border shall be toward Zedad. The border shall proceed to Zebron, and it shall end at Azar Enan. This shall be your northern border. You shall mark out your eastern border from Azar Enan to Shephan. The border shall go down from Shephan to Ribla on the east side of Ain. The border shall go down and reach to the eastern side of the, of the sea of Chinaret. The border shall go down along the Jordan and shall end at the salt sea. This shall be your land with its surrounding boundaries. Then Moses commanded the children of Israel, saying, This is the land which you shall inherit by lot, which the Lord has commanded to give to the nine tribes and to the half tribe, for the, for the tribe of the children of Reuben, according to the house of their fathers, and the tribe of the children of God, According to the house of your fathers, I have received their inheritance, and the half tribe of Manasseh have received its inheritance. The two tribes and the tribe and the half tribe have received their inheritance on the side of the Jordan, on this side of the Jordan, across from Jericho eastward towards the sunrise. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, These are the names of the men who shall divide the land among you as an inheritance. Elias are the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun, and you shall take one leader of every tribe. To divide the land for the inheritance. These are the names of the men from the tribe of Judah, Caleb the son of Jephunneh, from the tribe of the children of Simeon, Shemel the son of Amiod, from the tribe of Benjamin, Elida the son of Chislon, a leader from the tribe of the children of Dan, Buki the son of Jogli, from the sons of Joseph, a leader from the tribe of the children of Manasseh, Aniel the son of Ephod, and a leader from the tribe of the children of Ephraim, Kemel the son of Shiftam. A leader from the tribe of the children of Zebulon, Elizavan, the son of Panak, a leader from the children of a leader from the tribe of the children of Issachar, Patiel, the son of Azan, a leader from the tribe from the tribe of the children of Asher, Ayud, the son of Shelomi, and a leader from the tribe of the children of Naphtali, Pedahel, the son of Amiud. These are the ones the Lord commanded to divide inheritance among the children of Israel in the land of Canaan. And the Lord spoke to Moses in the plains of Moab by the Jordan across the Jericho, saying, Command the children of Israel, chapter 35 now, command the children of Israel that they give the Levites cities to dwell in from the inheritance of their possession. And you shall also give the Levites common land among around the cities. They shall have the cities to dwell in, and their common land shall be for their cattle, for their ad, for their herds, and for all their animals. The common land of the cities which you will give the Levites shall extend from the wall of the city outside a thousand cubits all around, and you shall measure outside the city on the east on the east side two thousand cubits, on the south side two thousand cubits, on the west side two thousand cubits, and on the north side two thousand cubits. The city shall be in the middle. This shall belong to them as common land for the cities. Now among the cities which you will give to the Levites, you shall appoint six cities. Of refuge to which a manslayer may flee, and to this you shall add forty-two cities. So all the cities you will give to the Levites shall be forty-eight. Thus you shall give 
and thus you shall give with their common land, and the cities which you will give shall be from the possession of the children of Israel. From the larger tribe you shall give many, from the smaller you shall give few. Each shall give some of its cities to the Levites in proportion to the inheritance that each receives. Then the children spoke. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, "Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall appoint cities to." To be cities of refuge for you, that the manslayer who kills any person accidentally may flee there. They shall be they shall be cities of refuge for you from the avenger, that the manslayer may not die until he stands before the congregation in judgment. And of the cities which you give, you shall have six cities of refuge. You shall appoint three cities on this side of the Jordan, and three cities you shall appoint in the land of Canaan, which will be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be for refuge for the children of Israel, for the stranger, and for the sojourner among them, that anyone who kills a person accidentally may flee there. But if he strikes him with an iron implement, so that he dies, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. And if he strikes him with a stone in the hand, by which one could die, and he, and he does die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall, be surely, shall surely be put to death. Or if he strikes him with a wooden hand weapon, by which one could die. And does that is a murderer. The murderer shall be shall surely be put to death. The avenger of blood himself shall put the murderer to death. When he meets him, he shall put him to death. If he pushes him out of hatred, or while lying in wait, or something at him, so that he dies, or in enmity, he strikes him with his hand, so that he dies. The one who struck him shall surely be put to death. He is a murderer. The avenger of blood shall put the murderer to death when he meets him. However, if he pushes him suddenly without enmity, or chose enmity at him without lying in wait, or uses a stone by which a man could die, throwing it at him without seeing him, so that he dies, while he was not his enemy or seeking his arm, then the congregation shall judge between the manslayer and the avenger of blood, according to this judgment. So the congregation shall deliver the manslayer from the hand of the avenger of blood, and the congregation shall return him to the city of refuge, where he had fled, and shall remain there until the death of the high priest who was anointed with the holy oil. But if the manslayer at any time goes outside the limits of the city of refuge where he fled, and the avenger of blood finds him outside the limits of his city of refuge, and the avenger of blood kills the manslayer, he shall not be guilty of blood, but he shall have but he, because he should have remained in, in his city of refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the manslayer may return to the land of his possession. All these things shall be a statute of judgment to you throughout your generation in all your dwellings. Whoever kills a person, the murderer shall be put to death on the testimony of witnesses. But one witness is not sufficient testimony against a person for the death for the death penalty. Moreover, you shall take no ransom for the life of a murderer who is guilty of death, but he shall surely be put to death, and you shall take no ransom for him who has fled to his city of refuge, that he may return to dwell in the land before the death of the priest. So you shall not pollute the land where you are, for blood defiles the land, and no atonement can be made for the land, for the blood that is shed on it, except by the blood of him who shed it. Therefore do not defile the land which you inhabit, in the midst of which I dwell, for the Lord dwell among the children of Israel. Chapter 36 Now the two fathers of the families of the children of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Man Manasseh, of the families of the sons of of Joseph came here and spoke before Moses and before the leaders and the chief fathers of the children of Israel, and they said, The Lord commanded my Lord Moses to give the land as an inheritance by the Lord, by lot to the children of Israel, and my Lord was commanded by the Lord to give the inheritance of our brother Zelovead to his daughters. Now, if they are married to any of the sons of the tribes of the children of Israel, then their inheritance will be taken from, from the inheritance of our fathers, and it will be added to the inheritance of the tribe into which they marry. So it will be taken from the lot of our inheritance. And when the jubilee of the children of Israel comes, then the inheritance will be added to the inheritance of the tribe into which they marry. So their, so their inheritance will be taken away from the inheritance of the tribe of our fathers. Then Moses commanded the children of Israel according to the word of the Lord, saying, What the tribe of the sons of Joseph speaks is right. This is what the Lord commands concerning the daughters of Zelovead, saying, Let them marry whom they think best, but they may marry only within the family of their father's tribe. So the inheritance of the children of Israel shall not change hands from tribe to tribe, for every one of the ch children of Israel shall keep the inheritance of the tribe of his father. And every daughter who possesses an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be the wife of one of the family of our father, father's tribe, so that the children of Israel may, so that the children of Israel, 
each may possess the inheritance of his fathers. Thus, no inheritance shall change hands from one tribe to another, but every tribe of the children of Israel shall keep its own inheritance, just as the Lord commands. So did the daughters of Zerubbabel, for Mala, Tizar, Ogla, Micah, and Noah, the daughter of Zerubbabel, were married to the sons of their father's brothers. They were married into the families of the children of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, and their inheritance remained in the tribe of their father's land, of, of their father's family. These are the commandments and the judgments which the Lord commanded the children of Israel by the hand of Moses in the plains of Moab, by the Jordan across from Jericho. Now we finished Numbers. Move to Deuteronomy from chapter 1 to chapter 2. These are the words which Moses spoke to all the children, to all Israel on this, on this side of the Jordan, in the wilderness, in the plain opposite Suf, between Paran, Tovel, Laban, Azeroth, and Dizarab. It is eleven. It is eleven days' journey from Oreb by way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barna. Now it came to pass in the fortieth year, in the eleventh month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spoke to the children of Israel according to all that the Lord had given him as commandments to them. After he had killed Sion, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Eshbon, and Og, king of Bashan, who dwelt at Ashtaroth in Edrei, on this side of the Jordan, in the land of Moab, Moses began to explain this law, saying, The Lord our God spoke to us in Oreb, saying, You have dwelt long enough at this mountain. Turn and take your journey, and go to the mountain of the, of the Amorites, to all the neighbors, to all the neighboring places in the plain, in the mountains and in the lowland, in the south and on the sea coast, to the land of the Canaanites and to the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. See, as see, I have set the land before you, go in and possess the land which the Lord saw to your fathers, and to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give to them and their descendants after them. And I spoke to you at that time, saying, I alone am not able to bear you. The Lord your God has multiplied you, and here you are today, as the stars of heaven in multitude. May the Lord God of your father make you a thousand times more numerous than you are, and bless you as he has promised you. Now, how can I alone bear your problems and your burdens and your complaints? Choose wise, under, choose wise, understanding and knowledgeable men from among your tribes, and I will make them heads over you. And you answered me and said, This thing which you have told us, to do is good. So I took the heads of the tribes, wise and knowledgeable men, and made them heads over you, leaders of thousands, leaders of hundreds, leaders of fifties, leaders of tens, and officers for your tribes. Then I commanded your judges at that time, saying, Hear the cases between your brethren, and judge rightly between a man and his brother, or the stranger who is with him. You shall not show partiality in judgment. You shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid in any man's presence, for the judgment is God's. The case is too hard for the case is that is too hard for you bring to me and i will hear it and i will command and i commanded you at that time all the things which you should do so we departed from Oreb and went through all that all that great and terrible wilderness which you saw on the way to the mountains of the amorites as the lord our god has commanded us then we came to kadesh Barna, and i said to you you have come to the mountains of the amorites which the lord our god has given us look the lord your god has set the land before you go up and possess it as the Lord God of your fathers has spoken to you, do not fear or be discouraged. And every one of you came near to me and said, Let us send men before us, and let them search out the land for us, and bring back words of us to us of the way by which we should go up, and of the cities into which we shall come. And if I am rushing, please you can you can slow down the speed. I think it used to be can slow down the speed. I have something to do. I have something planned. For this time that I'm reading, and I need to push so that I can get it done. The plan pleases me well. So I took 12 of your men, one man from each tribe, and they departed and went up into the mountains and came to the valley of Eshcol and spied it out. They also took some of the fruit of the land in their hands and brought it down to us. And they brought back word to us, saying, It is a good land which the Lord our God has given us. Nevertheless, you should not go up, but rebel against the com. Nevertheless, you will not go up, but rebel against the command of the Lord your God. And you complained in your tent and said, Because the Lord hates us, he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to, to destroy us. Where can we go up? 
Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying, The people are greater and taller than we. The cities are great and fortified up to heaven. Moreover, we have seen the sons of Anakim there. Then I said to you, Do not be terrified or afraid of them. The Lord your God, who goes before you, he will fight for you, according to all he did for you in Egypt, before your eyes. And in the wilderness, where you saw how the Lord your God carried you, as a man carries his son, in all the way that you went until you came to this place. Yet for all that, you did not believe the Lord your God, who went in the way before you to search out a place for you, to pitch your tents, to show you the way you should go, in the fire by night and in the cloud by day. And the Lord heard the sound of your words and was angry and took an oath, saying, Surely not one of these men of, the, of this evil generation shall see that good land of which I saw to give to your fathers. Except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, he shall see it. And to him and his children I am given the land on which he walked, because he wholly followed the Lord. The Lord was also angry with me for your sakes, saying, Even you shall not go in there. Joshua, the son of Nun, who stands before you, he shall go in there. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel, for he shall cause, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Moreover, you, your little ones and your children, who, who you say will be victims, who today have no knowledge of good and evil, they shall go in there. To them I will give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Then you answered and said to me, We have sinned against the Lord, and go up and fight, just as the Lord our God commanded us. And when every one of you had guided up on and when every one of you has guided on his weapons of war, you were ready to go up into the mountains. And the Lord said to me, Tell them, Do not go up nor fight, for I am not among you, lest you be defeated before your enemies. So I spoke to you, yet you will not listen, but rebelled against the command of the Lord, and presumptuously went up into the mountain. And the Amorites who dwelt in the mountain came, up, came out against him, and chased you as bees do, and drove you back from Seir to, Am, to Omar. Then you returned and wept before the Lord. But the Lord will not listen to your voice, nor give ear to you. So you remained in Kadesh many days, according to the days that you spent there. Chapter 2, the last chapter. Then we, then we turned and journeyed into the wilderness of the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spoke to me, and we scattered Mount Seir for, my, for many days. And the Lord spoke to me, saying, You have scattered this mountain long enough. Turn northward and command the people, saying, You are about to pass through the territory of your brethren, the descendants of Esau, who lived in Seir, and they will be afraid of you. Therefore, watch yourselves carefully. Do not meddle with them, for I will not give you any of your land. No, not so. Not so much as one footstep, because I have given Mount Seir to Esau, as a possession. You shall buy food from them with money that you may eat, and you shall also buy water from them with money that you may drink. For the Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hand. You, he knows your children through this great wilderness. These forty years the Lord your God has been with you. You, sh you have lacked nothing. And when we passed beyond our brethren, the descendants of Esau, who dwell in Seir, away from the road of the plain, Away from Elas and Ezion Geber, we turned and passed by way of the wilderness of Moab. Then the Lord said to me, Do not harass Moab, nor contend with them in battle, for I will not give you any of their land as a possession, because I have given her to the descendants of Lot as a possession. The enemy had dwelt there in times past, a people, a great, a people as great and numerous and tall as the Anakim. They were also regarded as giants like the Anakim, but the Moabites called them Amim. The Orites formerly dwelt in Seir, but the descendants of Esau dispossessed them and destroyed them from before them, and, were, and dwelt in their place, just as Israel did to the land of their possession, which, which the Lord gave them. Now rise and cross over the valley of the Zered. So we crossed over the valley of the Zered, and the time we took to come from Kadesh Barnum until we crossed over the valley of the Zered was thirty-eight years until all the generation of the men of war was consumed from the midst of the camp, just as the Lord had sworn to them. For indeed the hand of the Lord was against them to destroy them from the midst of the camp until they were consumed. So it was, when all the men of war had finally perished from among the people, that the Lord spoke to me, saying, This day you are you are to cross over at Ar, the boundary of Moab, and when you come near the people of Ammon, do not harass them or meddle with, with them, for I will not... I will not give you any of the land of the people of Ammon as a possession, because I have given it to the descendants of Lot as a possession. That was also regarded as a land of giants. Giants formerly dwelt there, but the Ammonites called them Zamzumim, as people as a people as great and numerous and tall as the Anakim. But the Lord destroyed them before them, and they possessed 
them and dwelt in their place, just as he has done, just as he had done for the descendants of Esau, who dwelt in Seir, when he destroyed the Orites from before them. They dispossessed them and dwelt in their place, even to this day. And the Avim, who dwelt, who dwelt in villages as far as, far as Gaza, we have Gaza today. <laughs> the Kaphtorim, who came from Kaphtor, destroyed them and dwelt in their place. Rise, take your journey, and cross over the river Anon. Look, I have given into your hand Sion, the Amorite, king of Eshbon, and his land, began, began to possess it and engage him in battle. This day I will begin to put the dread and fear of you upon the nations, upon, upon the nations under the whole heaven, who shall hear the report of you, you shall tr and shall tremble and be in anguish because of you. And I sent messengers from the wilderness of Kedemoth to Sion, king of Eshbon, with words of peace, saying, Let me pass through your land, I will keep straight to the road, and I will turn neither to the right nor to the left. You shall, you shall sell me food for money, that I may eat, and give me water for money, that I may drink. Only let me pass through on foot, just as the descendants of Esau who dwelt, who dwelt in Seir, and the Moabites who dwelt in Ark did for me, until I crossed the Jordan to the land which the Lord our God is giving us. But Sion, king of Eshbon, would not let us pass through. For the Lord your God added his spirit and made his heart obstinate that he might deliver him into your hand as it is this day. And the Lord said to me, See, I have begun to give Sion and his land over to you, begin to possess it, that you may inherit his land. Then Sion and all his people came out against us to fight as jars, and the Lord our God delivered him over to us. So we defeated him, his sons, and all his people. We took all his cities at that time and utterly destroyed the men, women, and little ones of every city we left nothing we left none remaining we took only the livestock as plunder for ourselves with the spoil of the city is which we took from Ara, which is on the bank of the river Anon, and from the city that is in the ravine as far as gilead there was not one city too strong for us there was not one city too strong for us the lord our god delivered all to us only you only you only you did not go near the land of the people of ammon anywhere along the river Jabok, or to the cities of the mountains, or wherever the Lord our God had forbidden us. Now, the end of today, no, the end of Sunday's reading, because today is Friday. So, the end of Sunday's reading, thank you very much for watching, and now I can go and do what I want to do. Seriously. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one on Monday. Bye. I'll see you there. God bless you. I may protect you till then. Bye. Oh, wait. Before you go, let me read this one chapter of the Bible. Let me declare this one chapter of the Bible over you. Psalm 20. Psalm 20. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May you remember all your offerings and accept your bond offering and accept your bond sacrifice. May he grant you according to your earth's desire and fulfill all your purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They have vowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. May the King answer us when we call. Thank you very much for watching. I'll we'll see you in the next episode on Monday. And I am praying in my mind, I'm kind of wishing YouTube will not find something controversial about this video because I once tried to post one video one time. It's not all about the channel. And they were like, something like, uh, I don't even know. Like something like, Something content maybe that goes along, that goes against their terms of policy or something like that. And I was not able to post the video. And I hope I am praying that they won't find anything controversial in this video so that I can post it. Uh anyway, I will see you in the next episode on Monday. I will see you.